Hey y'all, it's Hippie, H&H &H Racing Services, Bad Back and Knees Club, Monkey Junction, Mini Bike Menace, President, and if you don't like it, vote me out next year. Hey, look here, um, I have said this before, but nobody listens to me. The only thing that we have for sale is independent bike shops, independent race shops, is our time, our knowledge, our experience, and a small markup on parts. I have, and you know, the racing game is a screwed up situation that there's so much secrecy, bullshit, and lies in it that, you know, I mean, I can't tell you who, where, what, when, but I have 10 motors out there on this particular client's um, account. I maintain them. And it ain't none of your damn business what he does with them. Because just like a confidentiality agreement between an attorney or a doctor, man, I just ain't going to tell you. And I have got nuts the size of fucking really good plums. And if you don't like it, you can lick them. Look here, what this video is about... Um, I got three engines back for service, um, and we're going to talk about this thing for a second, because I'm going to show you something that you probably won't believe, you may not know, but I'm going to show it to you, and you can do with whatever you want to with that information. I can't tell you what the entire build includes because it's a racing situation and that makes it a secret. All right. But here's what I have from my uh, from my com uh, from my computer analytics that are on these engines. This engine which is, and I number every component of an engine when I put it together. That way, if somebody brings me something back, blown up, screwed up, messed up, and they've messed with it, I know they've messed with it. And I know what the warranty situation is. I know what my build situation is. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with the concept of planting a tree that you'll never sit in the shade of. But I live by this particular philosophy. If it was not for the man that went out there and built Rockingham, Steve Earwood wouldn't have been able to build to own Rockingham. It wouldn't be my home track. It wouldn't be the track that I cut my first light at in 1980 frickin' 8. And it wouldn't be the track that I'm going to on the 17th and racing through the 19th at as the director of operations of the Full Throttle Magazine Mini Bike Drag Racing Series, the All Harley World Shootout, the IHDRA International Harley Drag Racing Association, in the AHDRA, man, you know, it, it is, look man, I was born again twice at that track, I was married at that track, and I will be buried at that track. I don't care if you care, that's my reality, it is what it is. And I'm a little bit angry tonight, man, because I've been trying to do cross-marketing and build the nine engines that are in this damn shop uh, with the phone ringing, going off, texting, and Facebook crap going off uh, every four freaking seconds while I'm trying to build engines. And... The only thing that an independent shop owner has to offer 
is his time, his experience, and a small markup on parts. You have to build everything you build so solid that it will survive and you won't have a warranty issue, you won't have an angry customer, you won't have any of those things. So anyway, from the race packs, I was able to obtain this information. This crankshaft number one has 26 hours at 8,200 RPM. It has 13.4 hours between 1,260, which is the idle, and 4,100, which is approaching the track or somebody being a complete pussy going into a turn. I never lift. Fuck these people. Man, I'm, I'm sorry. I got a buzz. I don't give a shit. It is like 1230 in the morning. Hannah's in bed. And I'm out here trying to build engines to pay a mortgage so that my decision to retire from the veterinary hospital isn't the most idiotic thing I've ever done in my life. But hey, man, those are my personal problems. Nonetheless, we have race tech information here. Crank number one, 26 hours at 8,200 RPM, 13.4 hours between 1260 and 4100. I number everything I do. It's H&H &H 132. That is the 132nd engine I've sent out into the world. I believe in Yamalube 1040. And I also believe in the addition of one ounce of ZDDP for 16 ounces. The oil and combo is changed. And when I sell these engines and you come pick them up, I sell them with enough oil already in the bottle with ZDDP in them to do an oil change every four hours. Do you understand me? Crank number two that we're going to look at has 26 hours at 8200 RPM. That's where I've got the rev limiter set because, man, if you, if you go over that, the machine goes lean and you lose power, you don't pick up speed. So I've set the rev limiters at 8200 RPM on these things. Uh, for that reason, man, you can like it, love it, lump it, or hump it. I don't care. My stuff wins. Anyway, um, you got 26 hours at 8200. You've got 12.7 at from 1225, which was the idle for this engine, to 3700. Whoever drove this one was kind of a little bitty bitch. Nonetheless, this is H&H &H number 133. Then we've got, I'm sorry, I got a shadow there and I can't even read it through the camera. All right. Then we've got 25.78 hours at 8200 RPM. We've got 17.14 hours between 1214 RPM, or, I'm sorry, between 12 and 1444. Um, this is H&H &H number 134, and it also, as you can see, is a ZDDP um, four hour change. This is a Yamalube four hour change. This is a Yamalube plus ZDDP oil change at every four hours. Are you ready? Do you want to see it? Because I'm going to show it to you. Check this out. Crank number one. This thing is still 
absolutely mirror polished just like I built it. I'm going to skip over here to number three. Keep in mind, this is number three. Look at this thing. Look at that rod journal. That is absolutely beautiful. These cranks are also zeroed within a hundred thousandth. Are you ready to see what the non-ZDDP rod uh, journal looks like? Are you ready? Look at this nonsense. Do you see? Do you see? These are ARC rods that were plasta, uh, that, that, man, every single one of them was, uh, you, man, I, dude, I don't build something without checking the tolerance. I don't do it. Some of y'all are going to have something smart ass to say about me leaving the, uh, governor gear on them. But what I have discovered through this exact kind of testing is that by leaving the governor gear on these things, it slings oil up into the back side of the piston, lubricates the back side of the um, uh, cylinder, and every single one of these things that come back still have the crosshatch hatch mark in them that I left when I honed them and fit the piston to the cylinder. Every single one, even the non-ZDDP unit, still has my hash marks in it after having been beat on to this point. There's a reason we win races. There's a reason my motors are desired, and there's a reason people come from 18 states away to get H&H &H Racing Services engines. All right, and hey, you see that? That's part of my problem right now. I've been up since 6.30 this morning. We had a meeting of the uh, Monkey Junction, Mini Bike Menace, Racing Association. We cooked, we had fun, we squashed beefs, we created new friendships, we eliminated bad people from our group. Um, I'm out here, I'm in it to win it. I have bet everything on this little race shop. I retired from a veterinary hospital after 22 years to run a little race shop. What I have for sale is my time, my racing experience, and a small markup on parts. If I get a bad part from the factory, I have to eat it because I only charge 12.5% markup on any part I get. And you know why? Because I figured out that's what it cost me in gas to ride to go get them or in shipping to get them. There is nobody out there that has fairer rates than I do. If you think you can do better, I encourage you to lick my gigantic plum-sized left nut and go piss off. Because I really don't need people around here that don't appreciate what I'm doing. All that being said, man, I want you to look at, this is ZDDP plus Yamalube 1040. I am a Yamaha factory mechanic. I worked for the great Scott Britt, who now owns 17 Customs in Little River, South Carolina. I learned more from Scott Britt than I may have learned from anybody else in my life, to be quite honest with you. Scott Britt, Britt taught me how to do a burnout. I kid you not. And I do the sickest burnout in the game. Because not only did I take what the master taught me, 
but I'm brilliant on top of it. And if you don't like it, tune out, unsubscribe, and go choke yourself with a banana. All that shit being said, um, I do leave these governor gears on because, man, straight up, they throw, they, they throw oil up in the damn cylinder. Um, if I had it my way, I would have these things paddle-shaped like the uh, back of a paddle boat. And I can't swear that one day I ain't going to do that. Um, but they do an excellent job of giving you low-cylinder lubrication, throwing oil into the bottom ring. And again, man, even this piece of shit right here has, still has the hash marks in it where I honed the cylinder and fit the piston to it. But I want you to look at this thing, people. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? One of these things is not like the other. I can literally catch my fingernail in the wear groove on the non-ZDP unit. And if you look at this here uh, sheet, uh, man, it's got 26 hours at 8200 RPM. But it's got less it's got less time at low RPM on it. And this engine, um, yeah, it's got 2578 at 8200, but it's got a bunch of more time at low idle, which just tells me that whoever rides or drives, because, man, that's the racing game. I can't even tell you whose shit this is. I don't care either. Man, it's the racing game. I would no more tell you, and I know what's in them. I would never, I would no more tell you what's in Richard Stamey's engines than I would in Brandon White's, or I would in 187, or I would in Street Kings. And I know what every single one of those people run down to the minutia. And you couldn't beat it out of me. But anyway, and especially my shop, I damn sure ain't telling you. Because this dude is back. Man, you're probably better at math than I am. I need a calculator to figure all this out. But the reality is is whatever these times all add up to, you couldn't beat it out of me whose engines these are, what they're doing with them, or where they come from. Dirty Wade got a bunch of grief recently for promoting the fact that an engine builder has no right whatsoever to disclose what's in an engine. I agree with them in a sense, but I also know that if I went to a race and I saw one of my H&H &H engraved engines that was lining up, that was one of my 240s, or was illegal in the class, man, I would, I, I would first go to the owner of the bike and go, you're a cheating son of a bitch. And being that I am the sanctioned director for the IHDRA All Harley World Series and uh, um, uh, All, Ho All Harley World Shootout, I would literally tell them, if you put that bike on the track, I am immediately going to disqualify you and I'm going to ban you for three races. Um, but I would go to the owner first and then I would go to the rider if it was a different person and if that didn't make them go re-tech uh, that bike then I would go to the sanction owner and I would be like man dude I'm sorry I built that engine I know it's illegal fuck that guy he needs to get out of here all that being said, man, that ain't what this is about. What this is about is ZDDP. 
you can see the numbers and I want you to look at these three cranks. Now, this crank, I am going to discard this piece of shit. It's ruined. I've proved to the owner of these engines that it's a thing. And every engine we run from there on out will be ZDP equipped or you're on your own, brother. But I'm going to discard this crank. These two actually spec out. There is 0, 0.0 wear on these journals. There is enough wear on this thing that literally, man, I know you can, man, I hope you can see it, but watch what happens when I try to run my fingernail about across it. I freaking can't. It literally hangs in seven places in the middle of that rod journal. And this thing was mic'd, spec'd, just like these were. All the, man, dude, I built him seven engines at one time. They're all exactly the same, but these have numbered out on teardown and uh, uh, inspection and service. You can, you can hate me. You can do whatever you want, but the reality is you cannot beat me. And this is why. We do the research. We do the builds. I stand behind them. And I told this mofo exactly what was going to happen on engine number 133. And he said, prove it to me. And I did. I hope this is of use to somebody. If you're building engines at the performance level that we are racing and the performance level that we are, are, are doing here in this little bitty race shop, that thank the dear Lord above, man, the big man upstairs um, cares enough about my long-haired, uh, way too much bourbon drinking, uh, self that he is allowing me to pay my mortgage. He's allowing me to live and eat and have a really decent life and go to thunder at the rock next weekend off of what I'm able to do in this little race shop. And I thank you, Yeshua, Yahweh, man. It's weird, man. You know, Noah was a drunk. I don't know if you know that or not, man, but Noah was a drunk. And, uh, man, he saved the entire world and every species that was walking the ground from the Great Flood. I'm not Noah. But I am a hell of an engine builder. This is all you really should need to see. One, two, three. This is H&H &H 132 through 134. 133, it's a magic number. Um, tells the tale. If you're not using ZDDP in your high performance builds, you're asking for this. Now, the beauty of it is, is the ARC rod, and I am not going to tell you what cut, what length. I'm not going to tell you what pistons on it, because, again, ethics. But the reality is, right here in front of your eyes, and you cannot deny it. You can't argue with me. You can't tell me different. You know, I have been blessed with Mr. Paul Watson believing in me enough to still allow me to run this drag racing series after the most epic failure of my life. I had 37 racers coming to a race 
and the only two that actually showed up were guys that I brought that went to my drag racing school that I offer once a month at H and H Racing Services, Monkey Junction, North Carolina. Once a month, I bring strangers and friends or anybody who'd like to come in. I cook for them. I provide refreshments and I teach a drag racing school because I am a believer in the philosophy of planting a tree that you'll never sit in the shade of. Everybody that comes to my drag racing school eventually does end up on the track at some point or another, whether it's an ET race or whether they think they got the baddest boost on the planet. And when they approach that line, they know how to blow their tire off, they know how to stage, and they know how to cut a sportsman and a pro tree light. They know what to do afterwards, get off on the exit ramp, come back to return road, collect their tickets, and they know how to analyze the data from the run through the race tuners and all of that. And if I have never contributed anything else worthwhile to this world, that is the one thing I'm proud of. Thunder at the Rock is 16th through the 18th. If you ride a motorcycle, if you have a mini bike, and you don't show up, you don't really care about this. You are not a mini bike enthusiast. You're kind of like the worst people on earth because everyone that is involved in this endeavor has worked countless hours for no pay to bring you something special. Mason Pittman of the mini bike misfits out of Georgia is running the TT race, a circle track race, sidecar race, multiple classes. Man, he's got five classes. I, Doug Hippie Dixon, am running the drag racing series through the Full Throttle Magazine Mini Bike Drag Racing Series. Please join our group. The rule book is pinned to the top of the page. And Carl Wilson, who ironically enough, man, the first time I ever decided that I was going to race anything in my life back in 1985, I went to Richard Brickhouse's track with a 1970 Camaro with a 350 uh, with a four uh, with a 400 uh, uh, transmission in it, you know, four speed automatic. But we used to run them in reverse. We actually ran the reverse gear on that uh, three eighths mile uh, uh, high banked oval. The first time I ever raced anything in my life, Carl Wilson teched my car, and it's so funny that he's a mini back mini bike maniac um, and Charles Williams who is very closely associated with this man is the guy that got me into mini bikes it's a small world but nonetheless um, I am very thankful for Mr. Carl Wilson he has done more for motorsports in the Cape Fear region than anyone else period Full stop, end of sentence. That being said, um, Mr. Carl Wilson is hosting a mini bike show at 7 p.m. at Thunder at the Rock um, with multiple classes, anything from, uh, man, hey, join the Full Throttle Magazine Mini Bike Drag Racing Series web uh, uh, group on Facebook and all the information's there. Please feel free to join the Monkey Junction uh, Menace Mini Bike Racing Association and 
please feel free to like H and H Racing Services on Facebook as well. That's our shop. You want to go fast? You want a motor that won't break? We have won more races for the simple reason our shit didn't break than we have ever than anyone else has won in the last two years. It's a fact. Now Ricky Kentralis owns that damn drag strip. But we're coming for him. His brother Roy pissed me off the other day and I went and spent way too much money on parts because I am hunting him like a buffalo. I am hunting him like my tribe is starving. Roy, I really like you, but I am coming for your soul. All that being said, this is all about what you run in those engines and I still am right here there are seven raised catches that will stop your fingernail on Asian Age number 133 and if you look that's a great big donut that's a zero ZDP and the oil was changed every four hours of race time do you see? Do you see? All right, man. I got to get back to work. Um, where I'm at right now, I've got uh, about five and a half more hours that I've got to put in in this shop before I can go wrap my arms around my sweet wife and the love of my life and the most perfect being I've ever known, uh, Hannah Lynn Dixon. I love my wife and I'm ashamed of it and I will crawl up on the roof and scream it and piss my neighbors off if I got to. But here's the reality, man. Please understand that what you do to your oil, keep in mind, these are ARC rods that are being running these things. That is a ruined journal. ZDDP Yama Lube I mean just look at the difference and one more time man I'm going to show you this sheet I really want you to understand this because I don't care if you use every bit of the knowledge that I give everything I have to say on this here YouTube channel use it try to catch me I want you to be competitive. I want you to come after me. You're not going to catch me because I'm going to keep evolving. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep doing. But in all seriousness, man, understand what you're looking at. I have rambled on for 33 minutes. That is... $22.50 in shop time I will never get back but hopefully I've shared something with you that's worthwhile I have got to get back to work because again the only thing an independent bike shop race shop any of us have got to offer is our time, our knowledge and a small markup on parts this video cost me money to make but I thought it was important enough to share it with you. All right. Now y'all go do something with that knowledge. I'm out. Hippie, Hannah, Tony Wentz, Devin, the crew that makes this thing happen, send you our love. And if you don't show up at Rockingham, Man, I don't know for a fact I won't punch you in the head one day. Hippie out.